Hi everyone, uh, Case here, Auto Tectonic, and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough basic video about the Endorphins Godspeed Oscillator. I'm doing this because there aren't a lot of videos out there that show off what this oscillator can do on its own, um, away from other Endorphins modules, which I don't own. Um, this is for someone in the light bath community who was asking about it, so we'll just do a really quick walkthrough of, of what it sounds like and, and maybe use it in a patch together. So, Endorphins Godspeed uh, is a 6 HP kind of complex oscillator. Uh, has a lot of features built into a really small package. Um, and I would say it's not the purest oscillator in the world. It's certainly geared towards FM synthesis and gnarly sounds. Um, with a lot of things that make working with it really, really convenient and really easy. So first, uh, I'll talk about the two outputs. There are two outputs and an additional sub-output that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but this one on the right is labeled even odd. Sorry, it's labeled side fold. And that is a sine oscillator. It sounds like this. You can hear it, you can see it on the scope. It's not a perfect sine wave. It's a little bit rough at the peaks. Um, and that is fine. Um, that's not why we're using this oscillator for a mathematically pure sine wave. Uh, and the first thing I'll show you about Endorphin's Godspeed is the built-in octave switcher. So we're at the middle state right now. We can go lower. We can go higher. Um, and you'll see the LED on the module blinking, and that's showing us the tuning. So right now we are blue, which means we're below the closest A in the scale. Um, and the button at the bottom here will tune us to the closest A. You can hear that happening, and you can see the scope, the sine wave speeds up. Now the LED is pink, and we are at A. So you can trust that this is tuned to A, 440 hertz. There is a way to change it to tune to 432 hertz if you're so inclined. I'm not going to do that today. Um, and I can adjust the frequency knob again. And I can tune it. So I'm perfectly on A. Then down an octave, up an octave. The other output, the even odd output, uh, enhances <clears throat> even or odd harmonics. And it's much gnarlier and more uh, rich than just the sign. You can see on the scope already, it's, it's got some stuff going on here. Um, I'm actually gonna adjust the frequency so that the scope is a little more readable. There we go. So that's the output with no modulation and no FM, no folding applied. And you'll notice that it has a higher and a lower octave, and that's because the sub-octave output is normaled to this output when nothing is patched here. If I patch it, the sub-octave goes away, and I can patch it into a second channel, and you can hear it on its own. So that's really useful if you want to send the sub to a different place, or if you're going to mix them together anyway, then you get that for free. Uh, this also responds to the octave switching. When it's low, it's really gnarly and really low, which is great. Um, I'll leave it in the middle state for now. So those are our main outputs. Um, the Godspeed also has hard and soft sync. Um, I'll show that really briefly, but to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience using sync effects, and um, they're a little arcane to me. So here's our basic sine wave. I'll go into soft sync with an oscillator, just tides in, in audio rate. And it starts to catch there and sync. So it has that if you want to use hard and soft sync. Um, I won't get too much into that. I don't use it so much. Um, what I really want to focus on are the modulation options 
and the built-in complex oscillator style features of the Godspeed. So first there's the further generator, which I think comes from other endorphins modules, uh, but it's a wave folder. And so just by raising the dial here, I'm starting to fold our sine wave. And you can see on the scope, it gets pretty wild. If I adjust the scope so we can see a little better, it's very folded. And back to a normal sine wave. On the other output, with which harmonics, you get a very different effect. It sounds a little bit less like a traditional <coughs> West Coast wave folder. It sounds a little more fuzzy. And you lose some of that low end as well <coughs> with something patched into sub. You can hear it a little bit better. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this even odd output is that you can apply white noise to it and the Godspeed has a built-in white noise generator that you access by holding the tuning button and then racking the further knob. So with no white noise we sound like this and as we add white noise That gives us white noise for free, basically, which is really nice. If I patch out the sub again, just have that pure signal. We can still apply wave folding to it. And also, just to show you, the sign is not affected by white noise, only the other output. We reduce it back down to zero again. and we have no noise again. There is a little bit still uh, at the very, very high end of this oscillator. You can hear it. It doesn't always go away. You might need to rack the knob again. Um, it must have some sort of smart technology that, that senses the motion of the knob, maybe like a mutable instruments module, I don't know, but you can completely remove it. So that's the further knob. Um, of course, it is also addressable by CV. And it becomes an attenuator. And it works at audio rates as well. For some pretty cool, gnarly um, modulation. And the waveform over here is going completely crazy, which is fun. <clears throat> so that is the further knob. Back to our sign. Now, I think maybe the main feature that they really advertise about this module is the self-patched FM modulation stack with this knob here, which with nothing patched will um, add a sine wave to our output and self-frequency modulate. So on the sine output, that sounds like this. Even at 12 o'clock, it gets pretty gnarly. totally mangled. And you can also wave fold as well, of course, for some absolutely ridiculous sounds. The octave switching does less when you're applying all of this modulation to the signal um, because it gets so freaked out, but it does have an effect, a little effect. On the harmonically rich output, the FM 
it sounds like this. It gets really, really crackly up at full. And if you had wave folding, you're essentially just getting some kind of rapidly moving random square wave. And here the octave switcher doesn't do much because the signal is so mangled. Much like the further knob here, this knob becomes an attenuator when external modulation is applied to FM the oscillator. So uh, if I FM it with slewed random, is that even going to work? I've never done this before. No, you need a high, you need a audio rate signal, of course. So I'll modulate it with tides again at audio rates into the FM. And as I up the attenuator, start to hear it. Find a good frequency. So from nothing, opening up the attenuator on our sign out, but it's a little easier to hear. And that attenuator also acts on the CV input, so I could then pass this my slewed random and start letting that signal in. If I give it a different source, say, just a sequence from marbles, just random CV from marbles. Nothing, it's all closed down, and then I can let it in. So very versatile FM options on this. And lastly, of course, it has a Volper Octave. Obviously, you want to put that through a quantizer or something, but uh, it's there if you want it. So all of these things can be used together or separately to create um, really interesting drones, really dark sounds. Something I really love doing is putting it through a low-pass gate or through a, excuse me, a nice filter. So let's try that. Let's patch something. Uh, I guess I'll continue going through the scope. That's okay. Let's take the sign at the middle octave. Add some wave folding. Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll take these two outputs and put them into the SMR and just take a mono out of that. So the SMR is a filter bank that is quantized to a scale. You can move those notes around in a scale. And this is going to pick out frequencies um, and send them on to my mixer. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. Let's find out. So if we fold a little bit. FM. Now what the SMR lets us do with this filter bank is slewed, move around the different frequencies. So you can take CV, so I'll just set something up really quick. Or we're going to rotate through the frequencies based on uh, an LFO. The Godspeed is 
doing some work here, giving us those dark tones. If I patch the sub out separately to another channel, the sub is a square wave, by the way, I forgot to mention. You can see it on the scope. Just a square wave. See the square wave. She like the sub mixed in more. So that's one thing you can do with it, making a nice drone. Um, something I really love doing with the Godspeed, like I mentioned, is putting it through a low pass gate. So let's do that next. I'll take the harmonically rich output into my make noise low pass gate. Send that out. Yeah, let's just send it. Oh, my cable's not going to reach. We'll just send it right out to my mixer. give it a sequence. Um, instead of just using a clock, though, I'll send my clock to a Euclidean rhythm generator. So striking it gives us a lovely, lovely woody sound. No modulation on just a sine wave, the kind of low pass gate sound you might expect. When we add FM and we add folding, lots of interesting drone sounds, lots of really woody, reedy tones. Very realistic um, for physical modeling, I find, this oscillator in particular. I mean, that almost sounds like a string already. And if we use the CV as well as the strike, we get some really fun things going on here. That's kind of the base of a, of a cool track right there. Modulation back in to the amount of FM. And at a different ratio, from tides another LFO into the amount of folding. And up the tempo a little bit. Godspeed. Thank you, everybody.